it's so hard sometimes for dads to be a coach and a parent. And my dad did it in probably the best way ever. And I'm just so grateful for him for that. Our guest today is a playmaking game changer of a midfielder who just over a month ago became the first US women's national team player without a cap to receive a World Cup call-up since the great Shannon Box in 2003. And yes, until earlier this month, she had as many caps for the United States as I did. <laughs> but that's changed and then some on direct from Down Under, presented by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy, from 16 time zones away. It's a joy to welcome the one and only Savannah DeMello. Hey Raj, nice to be here. Just 48 hours after having made your World Cup debut, just your second appearance for the US, thrust into that midfield in the 3-0 win over Vietnam. Have you allowed yourself a single moment to recognise that, to celebrate that, a little fist pump even, that you're now a World Cup playing footballer, or is it all focus, all business, and you've just got to stay in the zone? Yeah, I think it's been um, a roller coaster of emotions. I've definitely allowed myself to um, kind of be in the moment and embrace it all. But yeah, like you said, it's focus, hard work, on to the next. It's just kind of looking forward to that next game and just trying to help in any way I can. Your dad is Portuguese, Parabens, and I believe you've said that Cristiano Ronaldo was like a god in your house. Oh, he still is. Yes. I think just him being a Portuguese player, my dad being from Portugal, my dad always looked up to him, always thought he was like an amazing player. And then when I started playing soccer, it's just kind of the one I, I wanted like to embody him. I wanted to be a soccer player. I wanted to play like him, score like him, um, live the lifestyle he did. So, Despite your dad's affinity for football, your parents never really forced the game on you. I love this about your story. Gymnastics was really your focus when you were a kid. You also thrived on the basketball and volleyball courts. Can you tell us how they let you come to soccer rather than forcing the game upon you? My mom was a gymnast, so I wanted to do that for a little bit. And it was actually the off season for gymnastics. And my grandma's the one that signed me up for for soccer and she'd let my dad know shout out to all grandmothers across this nation would be lost without you and you thrived as a kid playing at beach fc where your dad the mighty robert was coached for a time 2018 you earned a call up to the u.s under 20 world cup roster played in france alongside sophia smith emily fox naomi germa what was your mindset back then? Did it feel together that you were all on the pathway to that U.S. national team proper? Did it feel so close you could touch it, Savannah? Yeah, I mean, I think going to those Youth World Cups was huge for us. It allowed us to grow into the world stage, and I think it really allowed us that, like, we this is what we want to do. We want to get to that next level. The next level was, like, the U23 camp and then the full team call-up. So, um, yeah, we had a lot of special players on that team, and as you can see, a lot of them are here now representing the U.S. So it's just awesome being able to do that with such good teammates and such good friends. The Youth World Cup call-up caused you to delay your start at the University of Southern California. And because of an Achilles injury your junior year, you ultimately stayed there for five years. And you originally went to college to become a nurse like your mum. Mm -hmm. But you pivoted as the women's game grew around you, taking that possibility of your game ever more seriously. And you emerged as the number four pick overall in the 2022 NWSL draft chosen by Racing Louisville from Hollywood to Bourbon Country. <laughs> Solid rookie year. But what's followed is one of the most blistering sophomore seasons, Savannah, that's made a mockery of the concept of the difficult second album. Eight goals, three assists in 15 games, all comps. As you're starting to lash in the goals, unfurl the assists, almost playing with, with the kind of chip on your shoulder known only to Taylor Swift better than Revenge Tour what <laughs> changed for you on the field was it tactical was it mental that you suddenly decided you'd be the one to hurt opponents you'd be the one that knocked my rookie year um, I came in and I just kind of wanted to help the team in any way I can start getting comfortable I mean I think the jump from college to pro is a huge jump and I had so much to learn that rookie season I got to learn a lot and then my next season I was like okay now that I've learned I want to be the best I want to be competing against the best I want to be up there with goals up there with assists I want to be dangerous like I want to 
to be the Sav that I know I can be. And at what stage does Vlack count the coach of the US women's national team start to insert himself into the conversation this season? When does he start reaching out to you and what does he say? Like before the Seattle rain game, it was kind of after our Portland, he wanted to go over um, a couple clips with me and just things that I've been doing well, but also things that I can improve on. And I really think for me, I love being challenged. I love, okay, you did this good, but I want more (laughs) of this. And I'm like, yes, like I just want to be the best player I can be. And I know it all comes from such a good place. So Vlatko definitely gave me such good feedback and um, throughout the next couple games after that as well. And your form continued to be so irresistible. The Vlatka then called you into the national team September and October camps last year, but neither outing produced a senior national team debut. And I thought about you at the time, the cocktail of emotions that you must have gone through, Savannah. Here you are, finally called into camp with your mates, knowing that a World Cup is on the horizon, but you were never given the chance to show what you're capable of on the big stage, not for a minute. And when you leave those camps... Honestly, can you talk about the the emotions that you experience? Is it the pride of being called in? Is it just deflated frustration? Is it confusion? How did you feel? Growing up as a kid, all you want is to be called into the national team, like make that world cup or make that full team roster. And I was so grateful I did. And I think I learned so much in those couple camps, just what it's like to be in camp. Like what are trainings like? What are meetings like? So I think I learned so much. So it allowed me to then when I came into the world team roster in camp, like I'm like, okay, I've been here before. I know what this is like. I'm not necessarily like such a new kid. You're jumping ahead a little bit there because that is now we have the safe that you've your spoiler alert yeah. listeners savannah finally makes it but i mean were you not walking out just being like oh god just give me a minute just give me a minute you know jim carrey so you're telling me there's a chance yeah i mean i don't know i don't really i never looked at it as like a bad thing i obviously would love to have played <laughs> and get that first cap and all that but i was just really excited to be in the environment get the experiences i was getting and i think i was learning so much from those first couple camps I didn't want to raise my bud light to that spirit, that tenacity, that optimism. Um, if every person had it, I do think the world would be a better place, or at least a much more productive one. <laughs> but the tournament is growing closer and closer. You know, how often did you think about it back then? And honestly, how did you evaluate your chances? Yeah, I mean, I think I started looking at it in January like of this year I was like you know what national team the world cup's coming up and I knew that the girls weren't going to be in camp for a really long time it was like I think there was an April camp and then the next camp was for world cup so I know Vladko um, emphasized a lot on club play and so I just think something my dad's taught me is controlling the controllables and I knew that what I could control was that I was here at racing um, and just to play my game and make it almost like they couldn't take me. And that's kind of the mentality I had each and every game and just um, focusing on my club play. Focusing only on yourself, only what you were doing, everything else filtering it out. And you did keep balling out for Louisville. And, you know, the World Cup squad was going to be announced, I think, Selection Wednesday. But most of the players didn't know that until very late. How does it work as players? Do you have a sense of when Vlatko is going to be calling a rough window? Does that get communicated to you? Are you are you in your WhatsApp chats with the other U.S. women's national players? Are you saying, whoa, that person was chosen? That, but yeah, are you getting a buzz that it's happening? It's happening, looking at your phone. Tell us how it works and then how you feel as Vlatko's name pops up on that <laughs> caller ID. Yeah, so we got an email um, telling us what day it was going to be in, or like what day Vlatko was going to tell us yes or no. I didn't know when I was going to get the call saying yes or no, if I was going to get an email. And then Vlatko texts me. He's like, hey, can I call you in a couple minutes? And I was like, oh, my gosh. So Sorry, like, busy, Vlatko. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I like sprinted to my room. Then I saw he was FaceTiming me. And I'm like, oh, my God, I really hope he's not FaceTiming me like to say no and like. I'm going to start crying, whatever. Um, (laughs) But then my sister was in the room and then my parents were in the other room. And then when Vladko said yes, my sister like sprinted out and like told my parents. And in the back of the video, you can hear them screaming. We selected you for the roster for the World Cup. (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't joke with something like this. (laughs) The thing I really love about it is there's a delayed reaction and then just an incredible explosion of noise in your home. It's like fireworks <laughs> as news crackles to your family. 
Absolutely. Uh, we're very... So that's my family. Yes, I could hear the excitement there. Humanly heartwarming. And I need to know, you know you've talked about your dad um, and the, the investment, the energy, the wisdom that he's poured into your game. What, what was that conversation like when you put the phone down, turning around to your dad, Robert, and saying, we made it? Yeah, and I think that's exactly like the word we, because it's not, it was never like, oh, I made it. It's like, I wouldn't be who I am without him. And, you know, I always say this, but it's so hard sometimes for dads to be a coach and a parent. And my dad did it in probably the best way ever. And I'm just so grateful for him for that. How would you describe it? The best way ever? How would you describe that way? Yeah, I mean, I think we just had a really good understanding of each other. Um, He knew when he could be hard on me. And then he also knew like, okay, like soccer is a sport. And like, this is my child. Like, I need to be a parent now. So I think just he was he's been my coach since I was nine years old. So we just know each other better than I think anybody knows, like me. So um, he knows me. He knows when I need encouragement. He knows when I need someone to back off of me for a little bit. Um, so yeah, and even to this day, like after games, he's like, Hey, like, I thought you did so good in this, but maybe next time look and like, you know, he's still my coach, but he's like, but I am so proud of you. Like, how's the coffee? Oh, but like, that's the conversations kind of we have. Mm -hmm. How, uh, what what did he say to you in that moment? He started bawling, crying, and he's not really one to cry. (laughs) So like, obviously my mom was crying. My mom always cries for everything, but, um, my dad was bawling and, uh, that's kind of all the words I need. It was just him crying. He gave me a huge hug and he said, I'm so proud of you. And he's like, one thing he said was just like how far I've come because like you said, I got injured with the Achilles and you never really, I never really thought I would get back to where I am today because it was just such a horrible injury and then COVID happened. So just knowing I came so far from that is just huge. God bless your father. Tears of joy, tears of relief, tears of pride. But you had to get right down to the task at hand, melding into this winning team's culture, this this deeply historic team in an almost unprecedented way, just under rapid fire conditions. How does it work? Do you get a, a special sit down, like a quick briefing about the norms, the expectations, the realities? Who communicates it to you? You know, and how is it done? Yeah, so I think, first of all, like, I think the girls have been great. They have all helped me in the biggest of details and the smallest of details. I think that's, we're a team now, and I think they we all put the team first, and we just want to do anything we can for this team. But I also think coming through the youth programs, like, a lot of, uh, a lot of girls know, like, the resilience that we all embody to be on this national team. So you're teaming up with walking icons. Alex Morgan, what was it, like 207 caps. Megan Rapino now 200. Emotionally, honestly, as you travelled in to join them, you know, with your US national team bag still fresh just out of its plastic. You know, I, lots of people listening to this, myself included, we live lives feeling imposter syndrome. You know, you should not. You've blown away the NWSL this season. You weren't your slot. Absolutely and completely. But did any tiny part of you feel feel daunted, feel feel intimidated by this moment? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think I'd be lying if I said no. Like, I was super. Like, I think the day before I went to camp, I was so nervous. I was like, I just want to like get there. I want to meet the girls. I want to like be a part of this team. But very intimidated. I mean, we're not only I'm not only on the team with the best athletes, but some of the best role models in the whole world. It's great humans. So. Um, yes, definitely very intimidating, but also the balance of intimidated, but being like, okay, like I deserve to be here, the belief in myself. And it helped knowing that a lot of the girls believe in me as well, the ones that I look up to. So that's awesome. The last player before you, Savannah, to get their first call up for a World Cup camp without a cap is Shannon Box, now a Hall of Famer. I believe you are able to speak with Shannon in person before the send-off game. What advice did she give you about this rare, rare challenge that you and her bond over about how to thrive like she did? It's funny. So she was like interviewing me she was asking me questions and I was like I actually I ask you a couple questions because like we're in the same boat like I'm doing this for the first time um but she just told me to take it all in like I mean it's so many emotions but just at the end of the day this is a world cup this is something that is supposed to be super joyful super excited like all your hard work has gone into this so just living in the moment and staying where my feet are 
Is there a rookie ritual, a hazing, like a song you have to sing before the group or a welcome thing that you got to go through? Nope. No, no. And if there was, I don't think I'd be allowed to say anything about it. Whoa, wheels and <laughs> wheels. That means there, but there is. And we're going to get to no. the bottom of this. We're going to no. find out exactly which Taylor Swift song you had to sing uh, okay. in the opening meeting. I love but Taylor w- Swift, though, so that would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> you would have smashed that one. Um, to the World Cup and Friday night's game. And I believe you found out you were starting against Vietnam less than 24 hours before kickoff. When did you find out you're starting? How did you find out? And what emotions do you feel in that moment? Yeah, I mean, I think we find out for sure um, the night before the game. We go over our scouting report and it gives us the lineup. Um, Yeah, but when I found out, I kind of just smiled. And I remember a couple girls that came up to me saying, congrats, you earned this. Like, we all believe in you. And I think just the emotions inside were, oh, my gosh, I'm nervous. But I'm like, I have no time to be nervous. I just need to figure out how we're going to win, what we're going to do to win and doing everything we can to win. The night before the game, how do you sleep? Do you sleep? You know, I actually slept really good. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. I took um some melatonin and I knocked out because I need my sleep before games, but when I woke up, I definitely was I felt the nerves, but um me and Emily Fox went to go grab a coffee, talked, you know, she's one of my best friends on this team and one of my greatest friends of all time and just having her support and her kind words and you know I play on the right side right midfielder she's the right back so like just the connection I have with her on and off the field makes things so much more relaxing and comfortable for me. What does Vlatko say to you in terms of what he wants from you? Yeah I think he wants me to just be myself I think that's what a lot of the girls say they're like you do this every weekend in the NWSL like just do the same thing you do back at home. And that's what I'm trying to do. I want to dribble. I want to get in the attack. I want to create fouls. I want to get set pieces off of that. So just being like being myself is, I think, what everyone wants me to do. What did your dad say to you? My dad? So he just said, good luck. He said, I'm always here if you need anything. I think that's also something important. Sometimes I'm good. Like, I'm 25 years old. I have coaches <laughs> that are, you know, national team coaches. So he goes, you know, if you ever need me, I am here. But um, it was funny. He went to a pub after the game, or he went to the a pub at the game for the game, and he FaceTimed me with, like, all his friends. And all he said was, like, I love you so much. You played so well. That's it. And then he hung up because he couldn't hear me. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's <man>. my dad. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And so, man, I long for the day when I'm able to tell my parents I'm good. I'm good. I don't <laughs> need you anymore. I do believe one day that yeah. day will come. Yeah. But in that locker room pregame, As you walk down the tunnel, where were the nerve levels on a scale of 1 to 10? How would you describe them? Oh, uh, 10. 10. But I think the nerves were controlled. Like, the nerves were good nerves. They weren't like, oh, my God, I don't want to go out there. It was, oh, my gosh, I'm so ready to go out there. I want to, like, I look at every player on this team and I just want to work for them. I want to work for this country. Um, So, yeah. Which veteran gave you the best advice, Savannah? And what was it Mm. about the game? You know, I think they've all given me good advice, but I think the best advice is just how, like, they've been acting towards me. I mean, Lindsay comes up to me every chance she gets to give me a hug. Kelly O'Hara is giving me a hug saying, like, I deserve this, like, own this moment. Alex Morgan, like, looks at me. She's like, you got this. Like, those are the things that kind of stick with me rather than words. It's more the hugs, the you're you got this, all that stuff. God, when you walk out as part of that starting 11, when you hear our national anthem, take us inside your head. I was watching you and I was wondering, what is she thinking? What emotions is she feeling standing there at Eden Park, realising this lifelong dream that you've had to work so bloody hard for and that at times has looked unsure, but that dream was about to come true? Yeah. What were you feeling during that anthem? I mean... I, it makes me like emotional even just thinking about it. I had so many thoughts. I had so many just prayers. I was just like trying to live in that moment. And all I could think about, though, was we need to win this game. Like that's as much as like I want to think about I'm so grateful. We were like we have work to do. Like we are a team that have a big target on our backs and we we need to start strong and finish strong. And that's what I think we were all thinking about in that during that national anthem. The game itself, not 
quite the 13-0 thrashing the US women's national team opened up the last World Cup campaign with, but a, let's say, joyously routine 3-0 affair in which you eventually dispatched a gritty Golden Girls of Vietnam, and I love that nickname. But was there a moment during the game where you allowed yourself to stand there and think, I am doing this after all those camps in which I couldn't get a run out, the missed call-ups, I am starting in a World Cup. I think I thought that for a second when right before the kickoff, it counts down to 10. (laughs) And you kind of just like, like you have, I had one quick thought and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm here. Like live in this moment, be where my feet are, but like, let's do this. And we all were just like, all we had on our mind was the win. And like you said, it's not the 13-0 win, but I mean, Vietnam was a great team, played really good defense and they are a hard team to break down. So Just really excited we got the win. And I think at the end of the day, three points is the most important thing. I mean, it's a motif for this World Cup so far. Every team is organised, disciplined, bringing it without fear. Oh, yeah. But was was there a singular moment that will be a lasting memory from the game for you? Ooh, um, I think the countdown. Like, I think that countdown, the crowd was screaming. I mean, I think there was 42,000 fans at the game. Like, I looked around me and I was like, okay. Let's do this. And I've never heard that kind of a countdown before. So it kind of just like made, like it pumped like all of us up, I think. So I would definitely think that in the national anthem. I think those were two like just special moments. Last question for you, Savannah. What advice do you have for our listeners? A life truth that they can glean from your admirable, incredible journey? Um, I would say anything is possible if you believe in yourself. Um, that is the first step into greatness and to getting to where you want to be is just believing yourself, having full confidence in the person you are and never changing for anybody or anyone and just always relying on yourself and your family and your close friends and that can get you very far. I'm raising my bud light to you. You are truly a study of the human spirit, a human being who will grab fate with their bare hands, bend it to their will. One who's proven to all young footballers who love this team that, as you say, anything is possible. It's possible. It's (laughs) it is. It is. It's wonderful to be with you. Courage. Listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods. But first, subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. It's